This episode of What The Tech is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. And just in time for Father's Day, get $5 off the limited edition Winston set by entering the code WHATTHETECH when you check out. And by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. Go to braintreepayments.com slash WHATTHETECH for more information. Hey everybody, welcome to What the Tech, I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by Paul Therod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing great today. I'm in a great mood, if you can't tell. <laughs> can you, can you tell I'm in a wonderful mood today? I know you're in a good mood. You're, you're having some fun over there. You're, you're playing around with, with, uh, with an operating system that people have not used in many, many years. Yep. You are installing <laughs> Windows 95. Yes, I am. Uh, on a current on a new machine, I'm guessing. In a virtual machine. In a virtual machine, okay. It's not like he took like an i7, wiped it out clean, yeah, yeah. and started installing Windows. <laughs> it runs really quickly. I'm pretty sure Windows 95 is smaller than many mobile apps. How big is it? Oh, I don't know. I mean, the it's you know you kind of forget what things were like back then. Let me look at. Oh, well, it came on a CD, right? It, well, or in floppies. I mean, or floppies, floppy. yeah. Um. You know, the, the, the CD version, actually, this isn't even correct. So it's like, how do I even find out the size of this? It's like, I bet it's like 400 megabytes or less. Wow. Uh, well, this is. Well, it would have to be, right? Because what, what is the 700 megs was the most at that time for a CD? Yep. So it would have to be under seven. And it came on floppy. And, and by the way, that's, that is actually inflated because it has a bunch of demos and uh, videos and a sampler on there and stuff. I mean, just like the Windows 95 folder, which is pretty much, I and mean, this is a driver folder too. I'll, actually, let's include that. We'll include drivers, help, and Windows 95, that whole thing. Yeah. Um, that probably takes 100, 128 megabytes. Wow. That's actually tiny compared to what So how many have. floppies did it come on? Oh, I don't remember. The, the floppy version wasn't everything uh, because you couldn't get all that other, you know, you couldn't fit. Yeah. I mean, you, you couldn't get videos on, you know, so I'm not, I don't remember exactly. How many diskettes was it on? It's IE302. That's odd. Yeah, that that's uh, that's going to be an interesting. Are you are you writing something for the website? Uh, eventually. Yeah. You're just, just, you're just playing around today. Yeah. This. I mean, I'll probably do, you know, I'll do something later for August or something. I got to find, I have my, I can see it over there. I have an Office 95 disk. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Well, yeah. this is not the show for Windows 95. Uh, <laughs> sure it is. Yeah, why not? Everything We talk about everything here. We talk about Windows 95. Uh, I've explained this a couple times. You know, um, I, I know we picked up a lot of new viewers over the last couple of weeks. I've been hearing a lot of emails from people. I've been getting a lot of emails from people and hearing from a lot of people on Twitter and uh, Facebook. Uh, we, this show, I'd like to describe it as two guys that are into tech hanging out at a bar. We're not sure. sitting here and delivering the news. We're just, you know, BSing a little bit. We're just having a good time. We're talking about it. And, you know, sometimes we're wrong and sometimes we're right. We're just shooting the breeze. I'm <laughs> wrong a lot of the times. I say stuff that I regret the following day all the time on the show. I say things I regret the following minute. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I've done. Uh, my go to is, wait a minute. Let me think about what I'm about to say right now. This is what I actually mean when I said Microsoft <laughs> sucks. Sure. Um. A lot's what, happening. What, what's the nuance on that statement, Andrew? How, how do you how do you fix how it? How do you excuse your, your um, insolence? I don't know. I, I don't know how you could backtrack. Actually, let me tell you, Microsoft does not suck at this very moment because they are uh, kicking butt. Windows mm -hmm. 10, uh, I guess Newegg leaked some of the OEM pricing, and Microsoft announced the, the date to yep. uh, for the I guess the availability of Windows 10. Uh, they are getting a lot of positive press over this. Uh, from people outside of the tech world, which is always a positive because they really don't know what they're talking about. So if they're saying it's really good, that means it has to be good. It's uh, got to be good. I was watching, was it CNA, uh, CNBC or Bloomberg this morning? I can't remember what it was, but they were talking about Windows 10. And they were talking about this like it was the second coming. How it's going to fix everything. 
And sure. either that's really good that they're doing that, or people are just going to be extremely disappointed. I don't know how. I you know what I mean? Like I know we know that it's good, but if with all that hype, when someone installs this, are they going to say, "Wow, now this is this is an operating system. This is it." Right. I don't know. I mean, okay. Um, I don't know either. I mean, it, it's really going to rely on public uh, on the public perception of this thing. That's really what it's going to come down to for, for, I think, a lot of people. I think it's going to depend in part on where you started, you know. Um, I think a lot of people who are on Windows 8 are going to, you know, A1, you know, are going to breathe a sigh of relief in a way. I mean, it, it, it's enough like Windows 8 one that, you know, it probably won't make everyone feel great. But if you were not a fan of that UI, you know, you have a start menu now. You have floating app windows. Uh, it's a pretty opera. It, it makes Windows 10 look dated. Uh, windows 7 look dated, in my opinion. Yes. And I think that should always be the point. Yeah. Um, windows 8 was so different from Windows 7. It was hard, hard to compare. I used to tell people that, and I would still tell people that, um, if you can ignore the Metro part of it, the modern interface, just look at the desktop. There were so many things in there that were better than what was available in Windows 7. You just got to get over the other stuff. If you could just yeah. get over that, uh, you would be surprised by how good it was. Um, and no one could get over that. And so I think in Windows 10, that stuff is amplified. You know, um, The stuff that was wrong with Windows 8 has been fixed. And the stuff that was right about Windows 8 has been retained and improved in some cases. So, so somebody actually uh, said this to me, and it made a lot of sense. One of my friends, he's in uh, the tech world. He goes, mm -hmm. it was like when Ford took the 95 Taurus, the Ford Taurus all-time best-selling car at the time. They took it, and they redesigned the entire thing. And yeah, nobody and wanted it. It looked hideous, that 96 Ford Taurus. Like it to they totally changed the entire car. And it was like, oh, this is it? And they rejected it. <laughs> that was Windows yeah. 8 for a lot of people. Just was my, not My favorite not Alan Mulally story is when that guy um, came to the company, you know, uh, to Ford. He didn't actually know any of the Ford models. The only one he knew was Taurus. And so he was looking at all the cars and he said, I don't, what is this stuff? I don't understand. Where's the Taurus? And they said, well, we renamed it. It's actually called the Ford. I think it was the Ford 500 or something. Yeah. And he says, no, no. <laughs> he goes, first thing we're doing, we're putting that back to Taurus. <laughs> like this, you know, and, and sales of that car actually nosedived after they changed the name of it. So uh, I have um, I have uh, my computer here. Here's Windows 7. Yep. Uh, and for a lot of you people, uh, oh, crap, you can't see it. Let me see if I could, I could fix this here. Because uh, I want to show you the, the actual full screen. There we go. Uh, a lot of people will see this little thing on the bottom here. And when you click on that, here it is. How this free upgrade works. And right. people are freaking out. So you just go through this process, obviously. Um, By the way, the, this um, this little program and uh, people's reactions to it have proven to me for the 150th time that I am a terrible blogger. I'm really bad at blogging. No matter how much I write, I like I I miss I often miss the story, right? So the article that I wrote about this thing was called something like and the release date for Windows 10 is and I and that's what I focused on. When what really happened was hundreds of millions of people got a little Windows flag icon down in their tray and like you they clicked on it and they were like what the frick is this thing? And I didn't write a story called this is why you have a little flag thing in your desktop this morning. Like I didn't I didn't think to present it that way. And I, I, t I'm still, and I will continue to get emails from people who are going to say, hey, I'm, I'm sure you know about this, but Microsoft is doing this thing. And it's like, right, I know. I, I, it was one of the 10 or 12 articles yeah. I wrote yesterday, but I, I didn't present it properly, you know? Uh, so, still. okay, so my couple questions here. Uh, yeah. Right now, you see your your upgrade is reserved. I didn't. This is the first time I went through this. I didn't put in any email or anything on this I know, machine. I know. I, th listen, they are desperate for you to. You, you're going to upgrade. So but this, I had to on my other machine. I had to I, put in listen, my email. I, yeah. So, I, okay. It, th this one's actually hard to understand. But I, I've heard this from enough people that my understanding of it is this: 
once you've accepted the reservation, it is accepted for all of your computers. On the network? Mm, no. Um, because how does it know? How does it know that it's you, right? And Windows yeah. 7, actually, that would be pretty difficult because you don't sign in with your Microsoft account. Although, by the way, you could sign into your Microsoft account from your Windows account. Um, do you know if you did that? <laughs> did uh, no, you connect no. Your, no, I haven't. Uh, that's a, it's a fairly unusual thing to do in Windows yeah. 7, but it is possible. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. I, I am. Um, I don't know. But I've heard that from uh, more than one person. So okay. So this is what I did on on my main machine. I got it, and then I regretted saying okay because I don't know what's going to do. Um, I I put in the email and I said okay, fine, and it says well, we'll let you know when it's here. Fine, no problem. On this one, I just clicked on it and I hit next, 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 and it did not ask me for an email address. Right. So I don't know what the difference is here. Uh, I'm not using any MSID for anything. They're on two separate networks right now. So maybe this one, I don't know what. Will you accept the reason, the, the magic of software? I, I guess. I don't know what. <laughs> I, really, I, I, mean, I, I have no, I, I actually, have no answer. I, I really don't. I'm so, confused this as well. Okay, here, here are my issues with this. Uh, <laughs> yep. Actually, before we go into that, we should take a little break and talk about our sponsor because I know that this is going to be a, uh, a tremendous uh, conversation that we're going to have. And I know a lot of people are interested in what happens when the time comes to an upgrade? Am I going to be bothered by a blinking dock over and over again saying you have 10 minutes to, to, to upgrade? So we're going to talk about all that. I think a lot of it is hysteria. I think some of it may be true. Maybe we could figure out a way to get around it. Uh, but before we continue, I want to thank our sponsor, and that's Braintree. Uh, Braintree is for mobile app developers. If you, you are developing applications, if you're developing a website, if you are a business owner and you're looking to take payments over apps or online, uh, consider Braintree. Talk to your developer, talk to whoever is in charge of this and consider implementing Braintree. It's an easy piece of code. You just implement it in your, in your application and it's a payment solution. It's a mobile payment solution. Companies like Uber, Airbnb, Hotel Tonight, Living Social, the list goes on and on. They have hundreds and thousands of, of companies that are using their payment system. And the reason why it, it's actually a phenomenal piece of software is because it implements all types of payment methods inside of your, your software. So you could accept PayPal, uh, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, uh, all different credit cards, all different types of currency, you don't have to worry about having different pieces of software and different payment softwares uh, incorporated in one one application. Uh, my friend Josh, he's an app developer, and I was telling him about Brain Chain. He was blown away that he could do this because prior to this, he, he has to do a whole song and dance to get it to work. Uh, the awesome part, your first 50,000 transactions are ad-free, uh, are fee-free if you sign up with our code. That's braintreepayments.com slash tech. Uh, your first 50,000 transactions are fee free, so you could give it a shot if you like it. You, obviously, you could stick with them. If you don't, no harm, no foul. You just go to some other service. Uh, the other part is that they, they implement a token system. So your credit card information does not go to the vendor. Uh, we know how credit card fraud is affecting a lot of people. My wife's credit card actually just got stolen again, and it's probably because she probably bought something somewhere. And the credit card information got logged and they just swipe it. They put up, a, you know, they put it on like a bogus card and they go and use it. And they, you know, they buy $100 worth of cigarettes. You know, that's how they do it, Paul, to test if you uh, they're going to get caught. They always buy cigarettes. Yeah. They buy like a pack and then they buy $100. They buy a case of cigarettes. So obviously, right. you're, if you're using something like Braintree, if you're using a service that implements a token system, you're not going to have this happen. BraintreePayments.com slash what the tech. Your first 50,000 transactions be free. I want to thank Braintree for supporting what the tech and obviously the GFK network. Uh, we want to thank them. So, Paul, let's go right into this. I have a list of questions here. Uh, and I guess we could go down the list here. <laughs> all right. First, that obviously. I won't you, know all of these. Okay. But yes. Obviously. Okay. Well, we could discuss it. Actually, and, let, me, let me tell you something yeah. right up front. Um, I think a lot of people uh, have been asking Microsoft PR, Microsoft, you know, um, what, what's up? You know, what? how does this work? How does this work? How does it, you know? And eventually, I think I triggered so many questions. They were like, you know what? Uh, we clearly need to address this. We will have a post at some point that explains things more clearly. 
you know, I think some days they just want, you know, what Microsoft wants to do is just not look, we have a date and they want people to get excited. But the, the way the world works now is everyone has a soapbox and well, what about this? What about this? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and everyone's freaking out. And so from their perspective, it's like, we're announcing the date. Let's get excited about it. We have two months to go. We will, we'll let you know. Don't worry. Yeah. About it. Everyone's going to get it, you know, but anyway, go ahead. Okay. So he, here's, um, here's one question. If you have multiple machines, and, and this one, technically, they, Microsoft should say, well, you're S out of luck because you installed <laughs> you installed Windows on too many machines, and you shouldn't have. So I have uh, I have a couple copies of Windows. I got the Ultimate Edition here. I may yeah. or may not have put it on three different machines. I see. Okay? So now it's time to upgrade. I decide it I want to upgrade one. I, I decide I want to upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10 on one of my machines. Okay. What happens to that piece? What happens to the license for Windows 7? Are you trading in a license for a Windows 10 license? Right. No. That's part one of my question. Okay, so your Windows 10 license well, I, is I should say, over. it depends on how you acquired it. If the version of Windows 7 came with that computer from a major PC maker like Dell or HP. You're trading in. It's gone. Yeah. Right? You can't reuse that version of Windows 7 somewhere else. Okay. Okay. If you bought that version of Windows 7 at retail, meaning electronic, I mean, no, no not electronically, meaning, uh, well. You can, yeah, you can. You can, but let's not worry about that. Uh, uh, well, let's just say you can. If you bought that version of Windows 7 um, in disk forum or electronically, I guess. I don't think Windows 7, but let's just say, let's just say retail. Yeah. If it's an OEM version or if it's a retail packaged version, my understanding is that you can reuse it under certain circumstances. Uh, retail version anytime you want. I mean, you can't have it on two different computers, but you might have to phone activate, but you can It'll reuse work. it. It'll work, okay. I'm a little curious why, what the audience is for this question, because honestly, I, I don't think of these Windows installs as being precious resources that need to be moved from machine to machine. If you have a computer that is one of one or more computers that you own, and you're upgrading it to Windows 10, I don't understand in most cases why you would want to take this Windows 7 and now move it over to this hardware. I, I, isn't this hardware already running Windows something? I mean, what's the what's the advantage of taking a, a seven or eight year old whatever it is version of Windows and putting it on a different computer when you're you're moving to Windows 10 on your computer? What what what, what is this thing good for? I don't get it. Yeah, um, I, I don't. So he, here's my scenario. Okay, yeah. I have when I have very specific drivers that I do not know will work in Windows 10. I have to wait till the manufacturer of that of that driver, it's an IP audio driver, actually tells me, okay, we have tested Windows 10 long term and it works long term, it's fine, everything is okay. Um, so, okay, but now on what computer is that? On every single piece of computer that I have in the studio. Anything that I have with Windows, I have this. So I have one, so two, three, four, five, run... six, six machines. If you were to run this Get Windows 10 utility, it I believe that it involves some basic version of the um, upgrade advisor, and it would tell you that that's a problem. Okay. Right. It, oh, it uh, can. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 All right. So I should test so you that. You would out. know if the yeah. Windows. Now, I, I would also say um, the Windows Seven driver for that thing should work fine in Windows Ten. It should well. work. Yeah, it should work. I mean, the, the whole thing is because it does like timing and with audio so it, it may encounter some sort of problem mm -hmm. uh but okay so that's fine so i upgrade one machine if if it is if if it is a dell or lenovo or hp that you bought and you upgrade uh that's it i mean you've given in your license for windows windows By 7 the way, I, I i just ran this on my own computer to see what it said what did uh, it tell you it says these devices aren't fully compatible with windows 10 and there's only one device listed which is AMD Radeon HD 7570. It's a very so common yeah. mid-level video card, and that's nothing special. That's really funny. I'm not going to have any problems with that display. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and so, actually, there was a problem with Adeon, uh, Adeon, AMD Radeon um, graphics cards in one of the builds of Windows 10 a few builds ago with Microsoft Edge only and only in certain circumstances, and that actually has been fixed. So I wonder if that's related to that, and it is, in fact... Maybe out of date information. So here's a um, here, here's someone in the chat. To Paul's question, if you have Windows Seven or Eight One Pro, you are okay. currently using a Home Edition on another PC, but want to upgrade to Windows Ten Pro. All right. So, so we, we, you would okay. want. Before you, okay, yeah. Hold on, hold on. 
yeah, before yeah. you continue this question. Yeah. I, I wasn't actually literally desiring for anybody to tell me why <laughs> they would want to do this. Yeah. I, I and and I but more to the point, I was specifically talking about Windows 7. Okay, Windows 7. I I I think at this point, if you're gonna upgrade from a Windows 7 machine to Windows 10, it's a walk away from Windows 7. Yeah. Windows 8.1 is a different thing. Windows 8.1 is a more modern system. It's as potentially has life left. I could understand wanting to take a license from a Windows 8.1 PC, you know, from a PC and moving it to a new PC. That one I understand. Windows 7, I guess my point was, I don't actually think you should reuse your Windows 7 license anywhere else. I think it's too out of date. Yeah, okay. Um, so if I have a Dell and I upgrade, right? And now I got Windows 10 and I need to blow this thing away and install Windows again. How, yeah. how does that work? Do I install... Windows 7 or 8 or whatever it came with and then I upgrade or do can I install Windows 10 clean? Yeah, so um, Before you upgrade to Windows 10 you should back up your computer just in case. Yeah, however uh, There is a tool built into Windows 10 that doesn't exist I don't believe in previous versions of Windows that allows you to go back to your previous operating system now, if you have been uh, if you've been on the beta and you've been you know you're a Windows insider and you're upgrading and upgrading, you've probably lost this a long time ago. So don't don't think that you can, you know, upgrade from every build that came out since last October and then say, yeah, I think I want to go back and use the uh, restore tool that's built into the control or to the settings app to do that. I don't believe that's going to work for you. Um, but if you on July 29th wake up and it says, hey, you can upgrade to Windows 10 today, and you say, yeah, absolutely, I want to do that. And for some reason, it's not working the way you like. And that day or that week or sometimes soon thereafter. Just go right back. You can go back. It's built into the it's built into the OS. Okay. So I buy a new hard drive. Yep. Put it in this thing. <laughs> what do I install? You know, like that's my question. Like, what do yeah. I do? Sure. Okay. So I I have uh, pieces of the answer. And I, I think we can kind of surmise what the full answer is, right? Um, you you brought up up top this notion of I did this on one computer and and I have been informed that all of my computers are now reserving Windows 10, right? So what what is the reservation tied to, right? In other words, um, you've agreed to upgrade Windows 10. You don't actually have to do it, by the way. You can kill it if you want. You know, if July 29th comes and you've changed your mind, it's not going to keep bothering you unless you want it to. You can tell it, I never want to do this. Yeah. So I mean um, that was not, another question. So that that answer. Yeah, it's not it's of, not forced on you. You can you can say no. Um. So like what what's it tied to? You know, and and I think it is. Well, I, I know I should say I know it is. Uh, the I know that the reservation a reservation is tied to a PC, a license. Right? It is a product key. Yeah. And what that means is that Microsoft knows that at some point, doesn't matter how or when. Your computer was verified to be genuine, and it made the it met the system requirements. It was Windows Seven with Service Pack One, or it was Windows Eight One with Update Two, or whatever. And it, and you're in, and at that point, you're always in for the supported lifetime of the system. What the system means is, I believe, to be a combination of things. But let's just say the operating system, ten years, because um, that's how Microsoft says it. Uh, you can at any point install Windows Ten on that computer. At any point, that product key is saved to the Windows Store in Microsoft Words. I don't quite understand why it would be saved there, but whatever, so that you can access it at any time. So it's it's stored in in I get it knows. It, knows. it has made a I, I okay. So I I talked about how we have to surmise parts of this, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, because it is stored in the Windows Store, that means it's also tied to your Microsoft ID, your Microsoft account. But Obviously. that would be that would be true for Windows Eight users windows 8 and above users windows 7 i don't have a microsoft id doesn't matter you I, well okay i'm sorry but you haven't installed windows 10 yet i have not no so that's when that happens okay in other words uh right now you're you're good to go the the, the bits are going to come down to that computer yeah. at that point i believe you'll be assigned a product again I, like i said we have to surmise parts of this um i believe you like you will be i know you will you won't I don't know that you'll ever see it, but a product key will be associated. Will exist. You, okay. You can go get it. So when the time to come, when when I get a brand new hard drive, and I'm like, yep. you know, what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a clean install. I grab the product key. Well, okay, but but okay, but 
So here's the thing. So we we can again have to guess a little bit here. Um, on the on July 29th, this thing is going to come down. Actually, I should say before July 29th, this thing is going to come down to your computer. That's the point. It's like when you pre-order a video game electronically. The bits will be on your computer. Three to four gigabytes of stuff, depending on 64-bit, 32-bit, which edition you're getting, etc. On July 29th, that the floodgates are unlocked. You don't have to fight the planet to get the thing downloaded. It's already downloaded, and you can install it. Now, can you burn it to an ISO or whatever? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That that's I mean that's something I, I guess know. we're gonna I'm I'm sure we're gonna be able to. I am sure too. They they're doing it. They're allowing anyone to download those things for uh, those ISOs for Windows 8.1. There's no reason to believe that they won't do it. I have been told explicitly that they are supporting clean installs at any point, uh, okay, up front wow. or in the future, anytime you want. So um, upfront meaning when you when you get key. that pop up when you get that pop up saying hey you know sign. And you could choose to do a clean install, wipe everything out, starting over. Well, again, surmising. <laughs> I'll just tell you the way it works now is uh, th there'll be like a fast ring release of a, an OS. There's no ISO given, but again, the, the, the RTM version of Windows 10 is a different deal. There, sh there will be an ISO version. Um, you should be able to go to the Windows website and download that ISO. But let's, let's say you can't for some reason on day one. I, I don't actually think it matters too much because... When you install that thing on day one, you've got this system sitting here, whatever it is. It's a computer. It's got stuff on it. Uh, hopefully, you've backed everything up. You may want to do a clean install. If you if you do, that means you were going to wipe this thing out anyway. So presumably, you've backed up your stuff. So you're gonna you're gonna wipe it out. You know, one of the things you can do when you set up uh, when you set up Windows 10 as an upgrade is you can choose what to keep. And one of the things you can choose to keep is nothing. And that's basically a clean install. You got to remember, like the way that a um, uh, an upgrade works with modern versions of Windows, is you're really doing a clean install every single time, and then the system is applying back the settings that it can match. It's bringing back your personal data, your documents, and all that kind of stuff, and it is allowing the apps uh, that were already installed to continue. Working. It's it's not like what it used to be, right? By doing an upgrade, where pretty much it's not just replacing certain yeah. files. You know, yeah. it's not it's not the same process. So it's a little cleaner than it used to be regardless. Um, also remember that, okay, maybe you don't believe that or maybe you know that not to be true or maybe you don't care. You really just want to do a clean install. Even without having the ISO, once you've upgraded to Windows 10, and yeah, maybe it doesn't work right. You know, maybe the upgrade is not so great and you really want to do a clean install. You know, remember that you can also do a, a PC reset at that point, mm -hmm. which would apply the OS image again onto your disk and... You know, go from there. Yeah. Um, that all that said, without knowing it to be a fact, based on what they have told me, they have to be providing you with the ISO. They have to. At one and point, so they the, have the, to. Yeah. The way to think of it is, and and I think this is the, again, this is it, it's an assumption. It's it's a it's a it's an educated guess. But I think if you're on the insider program now, and you're, I think if you listen to this, it, I think you'll agree it's true. It will work the way that the slow ring builds work today. When, yeah. when a build goes to a slow ring, you can upgrade in place through Windows Update, which is how this will work, or you can download the ISO. And I think the RTM version of Windows has to be treated like that. It has to. Okay, so right? this may sound stupid. Mm -hmm. When you buy a new PC, and let's say yep. it's almost time for Windows 8 or Windows 10, and it has Windows 8 on it, or it has you know Windows Windows 7 to Windows 8. Let, let's give that as an example. And the, and the manufacturer says... You know, uh, buy now and you get a free upgrade to Windows 8. Yep. How does that upgrade work? So this is the big difference between Windows 10 and previous versions of Windows. Uh, and I talked to Mike Nash from HP about this uh, yesterday, which is in the old days, if you bought a PC within a certain time frame before the release of a new version of Windows, the, they, meaning the PC maker, would have that offer. The manufacturer. Sometimes it would be free. Sometimes it would be low cost, you know, to cover the cost of, uh, maybe shipping the materials because you were getting a like a disc in the mail. Yeah. So they, uh, they the would they send you a physical disc. Yeah, you know? maybe. Yeah, yeah. They, okay. It probably depended on the year and the PC maker, or whatever. But yeah. and of course, you're also paying for the support because the PC maker is taking a little bit of a risk here. They're upgrading you to a new system. It may not work, you know, um, well, or it may you know you may not like it. You may want to go back. You know, there may be support costs involved for whatever re whatever the reason. With Windows 10, it's different. Microsoft is shouldering the support. They're, they're the ones. They're doing this program. They've never done this before. Everyone's getting it for free. That means Microsoft 
is supporting those people. By the way, it also means that that period of time during which you could get the free upgrade is not three months or four months or whatever. It's six years, right? It yeah, goes tremendous. all the way back to when Windows 7 shipped, really. I mean, you would have had to have upgraded it to at least SP1, which I mean, everyone has. That's 2009. Um, you it's know, a long time. That is a Microsoft long time. is shouldering the support burden. I think we need to give them a little credit for this, right? I mean, that's a huge thing. I mean, but this, it's a huge this thing only for helps PC them. makers, by the way. This too. only helps Microsoft by by getting people to go over to the new version because it it, it one thing it's gonna and someone wrote this it, fragmentation is gonna be far less and yes. support yep. they're going to understand how hardware functions on their operating system with more people on the latest version they're going to be able to fix issues yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know bugs uh hardware um, issues driver issues right so uh, the, the driver thing is important because uh, you know here's there, look there are all kinds of things that can go wrong and uh you you could do something like this like i i bought this uh, hp tower that i'm using for the podcast uh, three years ago probably i don't remember it was uh, at the time the the best i7 you could buy it's at least two, three generations behind the current gen. But it's a fantastic computer. It is mostly a stock HP system. So HP, actually, I might be out of support now, but you know, let's say it wasn't quite that old. HP should be able to support this. And so HP would come to me nor normally, if Windows 10 was like previous versions of Windows, and say, hey, uh, I know when you bought this, it came with Windows 8.0. Uh, we're going to support the upgrade to Windows 10. We have created the drivers. We've tested them. We make sure that we know that they work. We're going to supply you with a disk or a download or whatever. Uh, it will either be free or you'll pay some amount of money for that. Yeah. And if things go wrong, we will support it. But here's the thing. I could have at any time over those two, three years replaced the video card. Yeah. I could have put in a Blu-ray drive, actually, which I did do. I could have added other hardware that's weird that HP doesn't know anything about. And anything could go wrong with it. And so the things that are happening this time that are, to me are very interesting. A, Microsoft is doing the support, not the PC makers. The PC makers, especially the top tier PC makers, you're gonna have a, a much better experience if you have like a Dell, an HP, a, a Lenovo, Asus, Acer, Toshiba, those guys, versus Bob's PC Corner down at you know uh, Oakdale Square or whatever. Um, because those guys can work with Microsoft to make sure that the exact drivers for that exact device are delivered to Windows Update so that you get those drivers. In other words, you're not getting necessarily, I mean, you can, but hopefully with a top tier PC maker, modern PC, you will get drivers that are very specific to your configuration. Uh, you're not just getting the Intel HD graphics, blah, blah, blah. You're getting exactly the right version of that thing for your computer as, um, I don't know, recommend is not the right word, as specified by the PC maker. That they've tested these configurations and have said, this is the best range of drivers for that device. So you're going to have a better experience. But it goes through Microsoft. Not, it doesn't come from HP. You don't have to go to the HP site or whatever and run a stupid little wizard and because that's been, install Java. and you know, Well, on stuff. top of that, on top of that, Paul, I mean, uh, I'll give an example. If you have, let's say, um, an Asus motherboard. Yep. No, that, that's, that's a bad example. Okay, you have a Dell, right? And you go to Dell's website and you go, well, look, there's a bunch of updates here six months into having it, uh, driver right. updates. Right. And then a year goes by, and you have a couple more. After a year and a half, you're not getting any more driver updates. You actually have to go and, 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 and seek out. Most people aren't looking. Right? Most people I mean, aren't looking. No, but you know, a, a USB issue could or, could happen. Yep. I mean, there, yep. things happen. A sound card issue. So the fact that you're going to go through Microsoft, and Microsoft Microsoft's going to kind of support these drivers in a in a better way, uh, with the manufacturer. Of, right. of the hardware, not not the computer company, but the manufacturer this, of the hardware is able to provide yeah. them with drivers. It's great. Now, we'll see. I, I, look, uh, you could have built your own computer. You could have bought a computer from a small company, a local company, a, a second, third tier PC maker, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, you're going to get generic drivers. And, and frankly, those should work. You're going to have some situations where there are no drivers and you have to go find them on the web and the version for Windows 7 and Windows 8, they should work fine. Right? But most of the time, this stuff will work. But again, I think the big difference here is we don't have to have special programs from the PC makers. Microsoft's giving this away. Microsoft is shield, is, is taking the onus of the support burden at, for, on themselves. Uh, they're saying that this is going to work. And so you either trust Microsoft or you don't, I guess. But you don't have to go to your PC maker, and the PC maker doesn't have to do anything special. I think this helps um, the issue where by giving Windows 10 away for free, Microsoft is arguably harming PC sales this year 
because a lot of people aren't going to buy new PCs because they're getting Windows 10 for free. You know, um, that's interesting. They're going to maybe yeah. see how see at least see how it goes, and then you know maybe it doesn't work, and maybe it does. But six months, a year, two years from now, maybe they they finally do upgrade. And so I think this is their little. Um, it's not little; it's big. But they're throwing a bone at the PC makers and saying, you know, we're, this time we're going to handle it. And there are self-serving reasons to do that. They artificially want to get a billion people on Windows 10 as quickly as possible so they can promote the fact that they have a major platform alternative to Android and iOS. But like you said, for fragmentation purposes, there's a very real-world support benefit to having everyone roughly on the same stuff. And they want that for themselves. They don't want there to be five versions of Internet Explorer floating around out there. They don't want there to be all these different versions of DLLs and system files and everything that every patch Tuesday, they have to come up with multiple versions of every one of these stupid, um, uh, you know, uh, bug up, you know, security upgrades, whatever, yeah. security updates. Um, so this is all, it's, it's, you know, we can be cynical about it, but I think, I really do think for most people, this is just going to work. I think that for most of the little kind of picky and complaints, well, how is this going to work exactly? Or my situation is unique and I have this and I want this. I really think that for most people it is going to work. I I sort of see my job is to hopefully, you know, try to communicate that in a clear way. I wish Microsoft was better about it. Um, they've said to me that they will clearly state how a lot of this stuff will work. Right now they're, uh, I, I, I often confuse the words dribble and drizzle, but <laughs> they're drizzling out information, which is their right. But I, I there are so many questions out there. Do you Most think, do you think mean, that's bad uh, considering we are less than two months away? Well, I mean, that's part of the difference. I, I did the math on this um, just yesterday, I think. Uh, go back to Windows 8, uh, 2012. On, on August 1, 2012, Microsoft shipped, you know, whatever, Windows 8 to RTM, uh, to manufacture. They released it to manufacturing. That product didn't ship in stores or to people or on new PCs until I think it was October 26th, yeah. almost exactly three months later. That was the delta back then in the old school ways that we still did things of delivering like a golden master on CD to PC makers, which by the way, I don't think they actually did. But let's I, say wish they did. Sure I wish they did. I wish they did. Yeah, I know, like, you know, like a guy with a white glove. Yeah, he shows up, he opens up like a yeah. wooden box, here you go. Yeah, yeah, I don't, that. Here you go, Mr. Ace. By the way, they, they used to do that. That's They really did used to do that. Um. Three months. That was that was the time that they would start. Well, not start, but really do the testing on the final code. You know, get it onto their computers that they're going to sell and see what it was like. Now, I can't I can't speak for all PC makers. I'm guessing that Dell, Lenovo, the big guys, uh, have all been. And I, I, I know HP for a fact has been working with Microsoft since before there was a Windows 10 on Windows 10, discussing the goals for this release, how they're going to do it, knowing that there would be some kind of program like this where Microsoft would upgrade people. Um, making sure that their computers that would release in 2015 would be designed for Windows 10, that they wouldn't retroactively be, uh, you know, placed Windows 10 on them, you know, yeah. that these things would be designed for Windows 10. So that if you bought a computer in March uh, for graduation or something or in June for back to school or whatever you did or in the fall for, the, for Christmas or the holidays, that that thing would work with, not just work with Windows 10, but that it had been designed for Windows 10. There would be functionality in there that would come to light just by having Windows 10 on the system that maybe didn't work in Windows 8.1 or didn't work as well in Windows 8.1. Um, that, that this is how these things were designed. You know, it's a different world. No, it's very and different. So the, the delta between now and the release, June, uh, sorry, July 29th, is already only two thirds of the delta between Windows 8's RTM and GA, the general availability. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But Windows 10 is not done. <laughs> so it's going to be less than two thirds. It's going to be half or it's going to be one third or whatever that, you know, but they don't need as much time because so, so when are these they companies already know that Windows 10 works on their computers. So when are they going to receive, I guess, their RTM? Well, any, any day now? I don't want to say, yeah, I don't want to say it doesn't matter because it does matter because there's still the physical reality of building machines, getting them out the door, getting them on trucks and planes and boats and getting them into stores. And I, the goal is to have some number of new PCs available for sale on that day. But the understanding is that that will go up over time all the way through the holiday selling season, yeah. right? So I think what we're going to see on day one is a handful of computers from a handful of the biggest PC makers. And everyone else is going to say, you know what? It doesn't matter. 
because you could buy a computer on July 28th. You could buy a computer on August 15th, and it, it ships with Windows 8.1, but you turn it on, and the, that download is going to start happening. And you're going to get that thing for free, and it's just going to work. And let's be honest. I mean, if you're going to do an upgrade, the most uh, stable and reliable time to do that is before you've done anything to that computer. You yeah. just turn it on. You know, you run the initial setup, maybe download some updates, but you you upgrade it to Windows 10 right away. And then you start installing your applications and putting your data on there, right? That's going to work pretty well. In fact, that should work great. So it's, it's not really a big deal. The other thing is, by the way, remember too that, um, you know, Windows upgrades used to be very complex and there was all this stuff that could go wrong, but they used to also take a really long time. So if you screwed up your computer, like you lost like a whole day and then yeah. you, and getting your thing back was like a freaking disaster. That stuff is so much more reliable and the fail safes are so much better than they were, but more important or as important, the process of upgrading to Windows 10 is so quick. I think it's going to shock people. It's like 15 minutes. It's going to be really fast. I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> so like this, I mean, I don't, it's, I don't, I don't I, you know, look, the, the reality is because of what both of you and I do, we're going to be hearing from the people that have problems. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think for most people, it'll be fine for most. Yeah. This is going to go great. Yeah. I really do think that. Um, uh, I, I just, I'm not going to hear from those people. <laughs> listen, most, most from, people are not going to format. You know, the questions I know. got is, okay, how do I do a clean install? Most people don't care to do that. How do I do a format? What happens with the key right. if I have multiple? I mean, these are these are all yep. great questions. Yep. Uh, and I'm sure that it's going to be fine when, when time comes and it's time to upgrade. I'm, I'm sure they're going to give you a key. I'm sure you're going to be able to have a little download, yep. download Windows 10 button. So you could actually download it and burn it to an ISO or do whatever, you know, whatever it is that you want to yep. do. Uh, but for most people, they don't even care. They're just going to hit an upgrade like it's a like it's a Windows security update and just go right through the process. And by the way, for most people, it kind of will be. I mean, I could almost imagine some people, you know, not even realizing that's what happened. You know, because we're, we're kind of yeah, used sure, to, every upgrade. once in a while, Windows go. will say, look, I, I just need to reboot. So, you know, close your apps. If you don't do it, I'm just going to do it anyway on Saturday night or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe this... Reboot takes a little longer than usual. And maybe when it comes back, it looks a little different. And I, <laughs> I think some people would, I, I think there are going to be people who don't even know what happened, you know? Uh, hi, uh, Microsoft. Yeah, I turned my computer off and turned yeah. it on. And it's looking funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I, I got a virus. Start screen back. I got a virus. It's going to be like, I, the start thing used to be full screen. And now it's like this stupid little menu thing. How do I get it back? Yeah. Like, that's the point that the rep jumps out of the window. Microsoft itself jumps out of its own window. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Oh man, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun times. Hey, uh, before we continue, I want to talk about a little bit about Google I/O. Uh, what we saw, we didn't talk about this last week because it was uh, Thursday, I believe. And uh, we didn't w talk about Google I/O. No, we spoke about what we were oh, hoping to see. We did not talk about it. And uh, WWDC is coming up on Monday, Paul's favorite day of the year. Oh, WWDC. Listen, I've been uh, working out linguistically <laughs> to make sure I'm on fire. And for that day, it's I know be you, awesome. you got you got to be like this is your playoff. I'm gonna be a peak Thorat. This is Game Seven <laughs> of the be, NBA Finals, yep, and I'm gonna show up. <laughs> and ball is showing am. up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I want to talk about that, but before we do, I want to talk about our sponsor, and that's Harry's. Guys, Father's Day is right around the corner. Um, I know a lot of guys, a lot of dads, get really crappy gifts. If you have a father, do yourself a favor. Don't buy him a crappy gift this year. This is what you should buy him. Buy him a Harry's razor. Why? Every dude out there shaves. Uh, I got a beard and I shave. Uh, and I and I'm. This is my personal story here. Uh, I've and I've told this a bunch of times. I use crappy razors all the time. I've been using these chic, really thin uh, razors. They're like a double r blade. Uh, it's like a disposable razor, and they were great. They they worked phenomenal for me for like ten years, and then they cheapened it. And the thing, I don't. I get one shave out of them, and I don't have a lot of surface area to shave. I mean, I leave a beard. And I got to throw them away. And it's killing me because I'm paying like 12 bucks a pack. And it's absurd that these things are not lasting more than a couple, more than one or two shaves. Uh, I started using my Harry's razor that they sent over a long time ago. And I'm going to tell you, this thing is unbelievable. I changed the blade maybe three, four times. And it's still going. The blades are really high quality. Engineered in Germany. Those guys make good cars. I don't know if you know that about them. Uh, and it's a great Father's Day gift. They have a great promo right now on the Winston set. 
uh, the limited edition Winston set for Father's Day. If you use our promo code or offer code, what the tech at checkout, you get five dollars off the Winston. So I believe the Winston is about thirty bucks. You get it for twenty five bucks. That's a great deal for you, Dad. Uh, comes with uh, shaving cream. It comes with a whole array of stuff. I'm looking here, actually. It comes with the shaving gel. comes with two blades. comes with the handle. Uh, it's it's an awesome, awesome gift. Really high-quality stuff. Your dad will love it. Uh, I actually got my father uh, one. Actually, you know what? I should email them and tell them to send me a couple ones. Because I bought one, and I want to give a, a couple more to, you know, to the other guys in my family. Uh, Harrys.com. Use our offer code, what the tech at checkout, and uh, you get $5 off. That's H A R R Y S dot com. What the tech is the coupon code, and uh, $5 off. Uh, but guys, bef- before uh, before we, we move on, make sure you order before June 17th to get the set on time for Father's Day. Uh, order by June 17th. I want to thank Harry's for supporting What the Tech, and of course, uh, the JFK Network. Harry's, you have a Harry's. I do. You have a. Sh- you know what? That's a bad gift for you. <laughs> if your kids you ordered you a Harry's Harry set. Oh, yeah. See, for you, that's a bad gift. Sure. And you're not the tie guy. No. What would you do? Mark shows up, gets you a tie for Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Uh, the only reason tie. I would ever want to wear a tie is to hang myself with it. <laughs> I yeah. That was that was a perfect setup for, and I knew that was going to be your answer. I just um. So WWDC, Paul. Let's talk about this for a little bit before. Actually, I... let's not talk about that. Okay. Let's talk about Google, Google I.O. I.O. Okay. New Chromecast. Let, well, <laughs> no, but actually, you and I discussed something. It must have been last week that I think is incredibly relevant and happened at Google I.O. And I hope and expect it will happen at WDC. I, could, I, could, I, was, I was a little drunk all of last week, so I don't remember what we discussed. Okay. We talked about this notion that Google and Apple might be taking a step back with this generation of their software, the yeah. mobile software. And, and, you know, in Apple's case, making it work well in older devices, which they've never done on purpose. And in both cases, you know, just uh, fixing bugs, um, cleaning up the system, making it more consistent, that kind of thing. And Google announced that. I mean, and, and by the way, I don't know if we haven't talked about this. Um, I installed the, the Android M preview, the developer preview on my Nexus 5, I which by the way is a horrifically difficult process. It is. is it, going through a developer school. You process? think installing Windows 95 was hard. Are you sideloading it in terminal? What are you doing? Yeah, this terminal stuff going on. It's, <laughs> yeah. cr- it's crazy. No, awesome. seriously. Like it's when when you flash the ROM on an Android device, I guess, the whatever it is. Yeah, you, you got to go into the bootloader. The, the yeah. phone itself loses multi-touch capabilities. You can use the three buttons, the three volume buttons. up, down, and power as to select and move menus around and stuff. Yeah. But you run commands from the command line. It is a harrowing process. Yeah, I've it done requires that. requires all kinds of setup. of times. And, oh, I've, I, this is the first time I've ever done it. I cannot yeah. believe it. Did it tell Let you to t- clear your Delvic is, cache? You got to clear you know, the Delvic cache. Yes, it's so, so check this out. So on, on, um, <laughs> on Windows Phone, uh, you install a Microsoft app and it allows you to get updates. And that's how that works. It's the simplest thing in the world. You can go... From Windows Phone 8.1 to Windows 10 in a in a heartbeat, it's terrible, but it works great. Um, in <laughs> in Apple, uh, you give them ninety nine dollars, and you get in the Apple Developer Program, and then you can just download these. Um, I don't know what they are. They're, uh, they're well, they're like, image files. Yeah, so they're they, image they have files. Their own, they have their own extension. It's iTunes it, through iTunes. Use yeah. use iTunes. Yeah. And by the way, it's quick. It fifteen minutes or less, and you're on I, iOS whatever. Uh, very easy, but Google? on Android, you got you got to shut it Oof. down. You got to hold oh, the, the 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 down, the oh. volume down, and the power button at the same time. Release and then hold it's it again, insane. and then you get the screen that says, "Do you want to go into the bootloader or whatever, the, whatever the, it is." The, the screen that you see on that, uh, it is the scariest. Oh, thing the white I've ever one, seen on, the flashing white no, screen. No, it's like a picture. I, I got photos of it. So I'll show you. Or the broken. It, it depends on oh, which it's one it is. Crazy. It's so crazy. sometimes it's a big you get red thing at the top and. It's anyway. That said, I have to say, Android M is exactly what I wanted it to be. It's it's nice. It's really nice. Yeah. It, it's getting a lot more consistent. I mean, most a lot of the apps are just the apps. You know, the Gmail app is the Gmail app, right? Because you're getting the stuff to the store or whatever. But as far as the OS goes, um, it is. A lot of people were saying how disappointed they were with Google I/O. To me, I think this was a necessary. Thing and I don't know what they're going to call Android M. I, I assume, based on what I see, it's Android five point five or something. Like I can't imagine they're going to go Android 6. with this thing. I wish and I hope they don't. 
this is to me a sign of maturity and a positive development. And I really think that 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 stuff is fantastic. The other thing I wanted, the other major thing that I wanted just to mention that I think is important and relevant, and it is about Android, is that there's been, uh, if you think about Windows Phone people like myself, and we and I compare Windows Phone to these leading platforms, Android and iOS, one of the fundamental problems I have is that Android and iOS are just like this grid of icons, and that the type of notification that they can give is not that great. Now, I know that Android has widgets, but I also know that those widgets are not in any way customizable. It comes in a certain size. It's going to take up that much space in the screen. If you don't have that much space, you can't put it there. There's no way to resize them, and you know they're not dynamic in any way. The, the live tile functionality on Windows Phone, to me, is so vastly superior to the basic user interface of both Android and iOS. I'm, I'm shocked. Because you could have either, as many or as little uh, icons yep, as you want. And you can, on the page, every one yeah. of them, you can configure however you want. I cannot believe that neither Apple nor uh, Google have ripped us off yet. I, 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 their, their basic system of launching apps is so fundamentally ridiculous and terrible and old-fashioned and stupid. It's, it's the, the program manager interface from Windows 3.0. It's, it's, it's crazy how stupid it is. But I, I got this inkling from their presentation at I.O. that the future of Android is not whack-a-mole, tap, 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 launch apps. It's Google Now. And if you want to see what the future of smartphone interfaces is, I think it's that. I think mm-hmm. that, it, you know, you flip over from the, the main screen. We know that what we think that uh, iOS is going to go back to that system and release something similar to Google Now for, uh, you know, on iOS 9. That first, uh, Google Now uh, today is basically just Google services in there, right? And all of its machine learning stuff and the freaky, uh, I send it, uh, my, my, this is an example, my, this comes from my wife. My, my wife asked friends of ours what they were doing on a Sunday night. The friend responded back and said, forwarded an email from a friend of ours who was visiting from out of town, said, we're picking Darren up at the airport so we can't do anything until later. Sunday night came, my wife got a notification through Google Now. It said United Flight 7707 is arriving 15 minutes early, so you might want to go to the airport yeah. now How to awesome pick them up. That? How awesome! And is she, that? it took her 15 minutes to figure out what that meant. She did. She's like a United flight. What is this thing? It was because it was from that, that guy Darren, and the information about his flight was in the forwarded email that she never even looked at. And Google does all of its, you know, machine languagey freakazoid whatever yeah. stuff, and it, it pulls this stuff out for people who uh, commute regularly. You will do that thing, you know, traffic information. You might want to leave five minutes early. There's a, tra- you know, there's an accident here, but blah, blah blah blah. For normal people like me, or for people who don't commute, I should say, there's other stuff in there that are things like sports scores or uh, things that I'm interested in stories and you know whatever it is. It's proactive. It's not Siri. What's the weather? It's hey Paul, there's a weather thing happening. Yeah, you might need to leave early. But in Android M, they're expanding it to third party apps. Uber, Spotify, whoever. And that's where I think the future, that's why I think it's so the future. So third of party apps in the sense that if you and I have a conversation on Skype, is yep. it tapping into our conversation on Skype and if knowing you, that we're going to meet if, if, we, if I approve it? And if Skype opens up, opens up. to that. Interface. Well, that, that's yeah. actually scary and great. Right. You know? Well, in other words, um, for example, I mean, some of the, there are simple examples like, you use Outlook as your calendar app. Those things will be in there. Okay, that's yeah. just really basic. But you're using Outlook as your email. And maybe we have that email exchange that I just described. And now it gets its tendrils into that. Because right now, does it do that for Hangouts? Does it tap into Hangouts? I don't know. It taps into your Android email. Every day. It taps into know. your email. And I'm curious for anybody that, that's, that's watching us that uses it. I'm curious if it taps into Hangouts now. Yeah. Uh, or will it, ha- because it makes sense organically well, to go with the hangouts because there's know. a, you know, Google now is intelligent. It's, it's one of those things that's scary and weird and kind of creepy, but, um, it, it can also be like location specific, right? Um, your, uh, I don't know, maybe you, you check in beers a lot on untapped. I mean, imagine I'm just, I'm, I'm making yeah. this up completely. You tend to, ta- you, maybe you tend to, uh, law, you know, like check in a certain kind of beer. And now you're walking around downtown Boston or whatever, and you walk by a place that has a unique beer from Belgium, which is a beer that you love, and you could get an alert through Google Now and say, by the way, we know you like this stuff. 
You can't find it anywhere else in the state of Massachusetts, but it's right here. You might want to go in. You know, it's proactive. I, I just completely made that up. Yeah, I yeah, that's even possible. But I think we could all imagine it. No, I, I think um, I think a lot of things are possible with Google now because it's 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 highly intelligent. I mean, it it knew. Uh, I had the same thing happen. My friend was flying, and he told me he was flying. He didn't even he didn't give me the flight number. He said he was flying on Delta. And he said, LAX, and I'm coming into JFK. And it knew, it actually, it was, it kind of knew. It picked the wrong flight for that day. Yeah, nice. So it picked the flight prior through the email. And I couldn't get it to get off because it kept thinking that that's the flight I'm looking for. But, I mean, it's crazy that it didn't even get a flight number. It just knew it was a Delta flight right. from LAX right. to New York at this day, on this day. Oh, listen, it, it, it's software. There's screwy things. In fact, I... Be, not coincidentally, one of the things I just did was, you may recall um, a month or so ago, I spent about a week in Pennsylvania. Somehow, I don't know why, uh, Google now decided that that address I was staying at in Pennsylvania was my work address. Oh, my God. And that here was my home address. So I was getting all these. I would First of all, you see things like weather for lower Poughkeepsie, whatever the name, lower McCungy Valley, you know, whatever, Pennsylvania. Um, I started seeing news stories from this area of Pennsylvania. And then I started getting the, uh, by the way, there's traffic on the I-70 or whatever, and you might want to, you know, it's like, this is nowhere near me. And so it, it's a, um, it's very difficult uh, to get that information out of Google now. I did figure it out. Um, yeah. But you have to really go, you have to tunnel into it um, to fix that. Yeah. Paul, we're running out of time. Uh, yes. We're going to do our bonus show okay. uh, after this. And I think maybe we could do uh, some of the uh, WWDC stuff for that. Uh, we could do it on the bonus show. Uh, we, record, okay. we record live every uh, every Tuesday at 3 p.m. East. Be on the GFK Network. And afterwards, after we do What the Talk, we do a show called What the Talk. And that's our bonus show. We record it live each and every week. And it's exclusive on Patreon.com slash What the Tech. Uh, if you're watching live, obviously, you get you get to watch it live. If you want it on demand and you want to tip us anything, you want to help us out, we uh, you could tip us virtually anything on Patreon.com slash What the Tech. And you get access to these bonus shows. Uh do about By a half way, hour. Yes, sir. This is completely apropos of nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> when I say the words bullseye to you, yeah. what do you think of? Bullseye, like a dart. Like, like a, okay. you're playing darts. You're, you're are you familiar about. with the bullseye candy? Bullseye candy? Yeah, it's no. like a caramel circle that has like a white powdered sugar thing in the middle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's like grandma's candy, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So... Do you have a positive association with this candy, or do you think that it's disgusting? Um, I always think I'm going to like it a lot more than I do. Interesting. I actually argued with my wife about this last night, okay. or the other two nights ago. What was it? And so I ordered some on Amazon, and it just arrived. You love it. You like it. <laughs> I think this is the greatest. I don't like candy. Like, I don't eat candy. Like, I don't. But, know, except for this. It. I love this. Thing. You know what it is? I like the caramel, but... The the center is always the texture of the center is weird. Oh, see, I think it's this is I think it is the combination of textures and tastes that you're gonna love this, by the way, that makes this candy the sushi of candy. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Does she yeah. not like it? No, she hates it. She hates it. I don't know how I feel about it. At times I like it, at times I'm like, ugh, this was a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> what I have, have never I done? said ugh to this food. I think this is, I don't know. What have I done? I've made a what huge mistake. Nice. I've made a huge mistake. Uh, go to us at gfknetwork.com, guys. Uh, subscribe to us. We're everywhere podcasts are available. It always helps us out when you subscribe. Download to the, download the shows. Uh, I got to see. We're having some problems with our Windows Phone uh, podcast. Apparently, some of them are gone. And I have no idea why really? some of our podcasts are missing now from Windows Phone. On Windows Phone. On Windows Phone. They were there. They were always there. And all of a sudden now, nobody could find some of our shows. So I have to find out why that we're is. selectively cutting them out. I guess. I guess. I don't know why. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. You can follow Paul at The Rot on Twitter as well. Paul does a phenomenal podcast called Windows Weekly every Wednesday, 2 p.m. East, on the Twit Network with Leah Laporte and Mary Jo Foley. You guys talk all things Windows and Microsoft and Azure. We should do an Azure drinking game to that show. How many times can Ma Mary Jo say Azure on that show? <laughs> and oh, Hadoop. Do you guys still mention Hadoop? 
Oh, yeah. Hadoop is meant. To, those are the two. Every time Mary Jo says Hadoop I, or Azure. I don't even know what Hadoop is. I, st- I literally stopped paying attention. <laughs> when comes up. My brain just shuts down. <laughs> Awesome. That's so awesome. Uh, That's it, guys, for this week. Uh, See you all next time. Take care.